Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's March the 16th and we're looking at Luke chapter 7. And we have a number of passages here beginning at verse 18. Um, the first thing we have is um, where Luke describes how that some of the disciples of John come to Christ because John sends a message and the message to Christ was this. Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? And the Lord Jesus at that particular time healed many people. And then he said, go and tell John five things. First of all, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. And the and the and the poor and to the poor the gospel is preached now what the Lord Jesus had done there he had given the five messianic signs let me go over those signs again you see the first sign when he says the blind see he's talking about a sign there which is far in excess than normal you see it's one thing to restore someone's sight when they've lost it but the Lord Jesus is able to heal and give sight to a person that's never seen they've been born blind to see the point so this is a messianic sign and the religious leaders knew that anybody that could do that could give sight to someone that's never seen they would be a candidate for the messiah and he says the lame walk now this is not just a person that's had a disability that's come upon them during life this is a person that's never walked now the lepers are cleansed you know in Israel there never had been a leper cleansed and the deaf hear now here we have the situation where a demon is possessing somebody in such a way that they're deaf and dumb now this means that because they're dumb they're unable to speak the name of the demon and they're unable to hear the word of deliverance now the Lord Jesus says that um, those that are deaf and dumb they are to be healed so that's a messianic sign and then of course we have the dead are raised and in this particular example we have the concept of Lazarus who'd been dead four days you see even the religious leaders conceded that after four days this would be not just a miracle this would be a messianic sign so these are the five signs that Christ tells the disciples of John to go and tell John about to encourage him he says those that have never seen are healed in their sight those that have never walked are walking lepers are cleansed deaf hear and the dead are raised and the poor the gospel have the have the gospel preached unto them and he says and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me that's my password for today blessed blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me and then when they'd left and gone back to John he, he began to speak to them about John he said what did you go out into the wilderness to see did you go out to see a blade of grass shaking in the wind no no of course not but just think about that a minute just think about that John was like a blade of grass shaking in the wind here was a man whose life was going to be brief whose life was going to be cut down in its prime and he was empowered and he was shaking as it were in the power of the Holy Spirit say that and um, did you go out to see somebody clothed in soft raiment bit of silk bit of satin no you went out to see a man clothed in the roughest of clothing he has camel hair coat upon him he says if you want to see people clothed in gorgeous clothes you need to go into the king's palace you went out to see a prophet he said well I'm telling you you saw more than a prophet because um, of the Lord uh, of John the Baptist it says behold I send my messenger before thy face there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist 
It's very interesting that the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves by refusing to be baptized by John. John was God's ordained man and he had a God ordained ministry to lead Israel back to the true worship of their God. But they rejected the message of John and refused to be baptized by him. And, uh, and the Lord Jesus says, he says, you are like children in the marketplace. You, you call one to another saying, we pipe to you, but you didn't dance. Oh, they tried to pipe for the Lord Jesus. He didn't dance to their tune. He said, we mourn for you, but you have not wept. The Lord Jesus was unaffected by the, by the play acting of the religious leaders. They said about John the Baptist that he came not eating bread or drinking wine, but you said that he has a devil. That's a terrible thing to say. And the Son of Man is coming eating and drinking, and you say that he's a glutton and a, and a drunkard, a friend of publicans and sinners. That's what the Lord Jesus was. They meant it as a term of abuse. He would take it as a term of pride. He was a friend of publicans and sinners. One of the Pharisees invited the Lord Jesus to dinner and as he sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, a woman in the city that was a sinner, now that means that she was a person that was unclean and she was a person that was unable to come into the congregation of the Lord because of something in her life that made her defiled. And she comes behind him and she stands at his feet weeping. And uh, the, the Pharisee says in his heart, he says, if he was a prophet, then he would know that this woman is unclean. And she touches him. She, he would know that this woman is a sinner. You see, the word sinner there, it doesn't mean that she's just a non-Christian. No, it means that she's a person who, according to the Mosaic law, is unclean. And she's unable to go to the temple and be restored to the Lord her God. And, uh, and so the Lord Jesus calls Simon and he says, tell me something. There were two men. One, one owed his master a month and a half's wages another one owed his master a year and a half wages and the master decided that he'd forgive them both he'd forgive the debt of both of them now he says which one of them loved him most and uh, Simon says well I suppose the one that was forgiven most and he said that's absolutely right he says this woman has been forgiven so much therefore she loves so much he said, when I came into your house, you didn't even give me the common courtesy of washing my feet. You didn't welcome me with a kiss. You didn't put oil upon my head, as is the custom. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. What an encouragement to her. What an encouragement to hear that. The Lord Jesus, you see, has power on earth to forgive sins. And the people said, Who is this that forgives sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Saved her from what? It saved her from the judgments of God that had banished her from the congregation of the children of Israel. She went away in a clean state. She went away forgiven of all her sins. She went away a righteous person now. And why was she righteous? She was righteous because she had faith in the Lord Jesus. And she was told to go in peace, in shalom. She went away in shalom. She went away in a state in which she was in fellowship with her covenant God. That's the point. So don't forget my password. My password is this. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Well, God bless you. Great to speak to you. Look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Bye for now.